Hello and welcome to our webinar today. My name is Julia Billen. I'm the owner, president, chief bottle washer here at Warmly Yours, and I have my lovely sidekick with me today. Scott, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Scott, and I'm from Warmly Yours. What a coincidence. <laughs> and uh, I work in the technical support department. Excellent. So today we're going to be talking about spot heating, the secret to uh, affordable floor heating. Um, it hits the spot, um, and we're going to hit the spot by also taking some questions. Um, we had some people who uh, gave us some things in advance, but and we'll address a lot of those today. But if you have questions uh, while we're here, you know, make sure you hit that spot right there and type that in and we'll do our best to answer it. You have the expert here. Uh, so let's take advantage of it. Yeah, you can type it anywhere else on the screen if you want to, but we won't see it then. <laughs> so the idea is to put it there where we'll be able to read it and we'll be able to answer your question. Excellent. So we're going to be talking in general about uh, floor heating for just a moment. We're going to specifically focus on temp zone product. Um, and the characteristic of that is that it's green mesh, it's cable, it's woven onto uh, fiberglass uh, mesh. Um, and we do that for a variety of reasons, ease of installation, uh, to control the distribution of, of heat. Um, so we're going to talk in general and be comparing uh, two products. One is our roll product with our easy mat products. And we want to talk about easy mats today because they uh, are just less complicated. They're really easy. But let's. what do you want to share about TempZone in general? Well, the main thing is if in the, the middle point there, cable loops are spaced three inches apart to help provide even heating. Mm -hmm. And it's designed that way because we know that radiant heat travels about an inch and a half from a cable. That's why you can't just put one of these in the center of the room and expect the entire space, the floor to warm. Wherever you have the heating wire is where it's going to be warm. If you don't have heating wire there, it won't be warm. And part of the explanation here is we, we know that they're three inches apart. If you put them too far apart, it's not going to be as warm. And if you get them too close together, it can overheat. So you don't want that either. It's called striping, I think. Yeah, yeah. So that's why they're spaced the way they are. And we're going to talk about placing them in the room to make sure that you're comfortable, but also that you have realistic expectations. And that is it's going to be warm where you put the product. And another thing across the, the board of the, of the temp zone products is these are always embedded. So they're usually embedded in thin set. That's the most popular um, way to install, but also could be using self-leveling as well. It's really uh, sometimes the uh, flooring choice um, dictates that. Other times it could be the craftsman, the installer's uh, choice in, in their preferred method. Yeah, we know that pouring self-leveling is going to give you the fastest installation and the mm -hmm. flattest. But however, there are other costs associated with that. So sometimes it comes down to what the, uh, the budget for that particular install is. All right. So in general, that's across the board. Now we're going to just hone in on the easy mats. Um, they're designed uh, really for targeted areas in the room. Um, the most popu popular application we'll be talking about today are, are bathrooms. And I really like to think of these things as um, they're positioned strategically by some of the fixture, fixtures or, that you, or furniture, if we're not talking about a bathroom, that are in that specific room. Right, and you don't wanna go under anything that's a permanent installation. So okay. if you have a counter um, or a vanity that's a boxed bottom, that's enclosed on the bottom, you there's two things, you don't want it under there, right. and you can't have it under there according to your National Electric, Electric. Code. Yeah. So you don't want it under there, you want it to be out where your toes are. So, and we're going to talk about placing that in a, in a spot where if you are standing in front of your vanity, that you don't have warm heels and cold toes, because that's a, that's a bad combination of, uh, of that. A lot of people are concerned about the building up the floor height too, yes. and that's not really a big deal because this product's only about an eighth of an inch thick, and it's encased in the thin set. So you don't have, a, you don't have the wire then start piling on top of it, the thin set or the self-leveling goes around it, so that eighth inch is actually included in the three eighths inch of, of mortar or self leveling that you're already going to have anyway to set your tile. So there's very little buildup. Great, let's take um, John's question. He's got two, you know, how does, uh, how does it fit under uh, uh, flexible floors such as carpet um, or uh, like a vinyl sheet? And I, I think I can take a stab at that. Um, you, um, you would embed this product in self leveling if you wanted to do that application. Um, there are other products, uh, not Tempzone, but our environment. If you're doing carpet, um, that can just 
float over a pad and under the carpeting. So we do have uh, ways that we can address those applications, either by embedding the easy mat or the Temzone roll or floating for carpet and laminate if you have a floating floor. And that's great because the carpet pad actually usually has pretty good R value. So what it yeah. does is it forces the heat up through the carpeting. The, the last thing you want to do is put a heating cable down here and then have a whole bunch of space to get through to the top of your carpet. So that's why we have the Environ product. That's what's so good about it. And John, I'm going to just uh, quickly uh, touch on your second question, which is, you know, how are they connected to power? Um, there is a return power lead uh, at the end of the uh, of the mat or the roll, and that is traveled over to uh, the conduit up up to the wall and usually connected to a thermostat. So in general, uh, that's how uh, you get power to the uh, heating elements. So, so a couple anything very to add good, to that? Yeah, no, that's that's really good. Um, most of the time, you um, are not most of the time, but all of our thermostats have GFI protection built into them. Yeah. So if you are installing this product with one of our thermostats, you wanna make sure that you put a regular circuit breaker in. You don't need any special breakers right. um, because the GFI protection is included in the in the thermostat itself. Right, and each roll or mat, John, um, your third question there, will have a return of power lead. Um, when we're talking about easy mats, um, these um, the characteristic of the mat is that they're, you, they're all three feet wide um, and then they have varying um, lengths, two to 10 feet. Um, our rolls um, are for much larger areas. Um, they can be designed either way, but you have a lot more variety. I think we have about 25 to 30 different sizes going out all the way to 71 feet uh, approximately. Uh, those would have just one return power lead. Um, we d recommend that you probably have no more than three rolls or, or mats uh, on the same return. Uh, just because it gets a little difficult for everything to fit into the conduit. so Yeah, and the thing is, if you're going to end up heating the entire space, it's better to do it with one long roll that has one re return line right. as opposed to five or six or seven easy mats. Then you, how do you hook all those up to the thermostat? Exactly. So that, those are great questions, but we're today going to be talking about that spot heating, right. not not the entire space. But I hope we, uh, we addressed your question there, John. There are three very good questions. Yeah, so let's take a look um, just quickly at, at the Easy Mat line. As you can see, it's um, you know it's just a few products that you can use to quite strategically uh, hit certain areas, um, as small as a three by two all the way out to a three by ten. Um, so, and uh, what, what, what's your favorite? Um, what's the favorite size in in your estimation that people are using? Well, they usually go in front of a vanity or a double vanity. So mm -hmm. there are your your prime suspects there, the three by three, the three by five, that right. sort of area. The area in front of a shower entrance might be three by two. Right. So I mean, once you get a look at some of these drawings that we're going to give you in a little bit, you'll kind of get an idea of okay, I. I need, I need, I like that space. Let me measure how long it is and see what will fit into that space. Right. Um, and why we do suggest spot heating, um, you know, it's, it's a great choice. It's a great way to uh, save money, one, uh, save energy, but also uh, the way we use our homes really, it, you know, kind, can dictate where to put the, the heating elements. Um, I like to look at bathrooms. It, it is the number one choice for floor heating. And as you can see, there's uh, right there in front of the toilet, right there in front of the vanity. Uh, those are the, the key hot spots uh, in a bathroom. And then I look at the dining room right you know, uh, under it, and uh, there's very little usage. And that sort of echoes my home 100%. I'm using the dining room um, Christmas, New right. Year's, Easter, uh, maybe three or four times a year. And so for those areas, you know, you're, you're not necessarily going to think of that as spot heating. Um, I, I warm my dining room, but I did full coverage. I put it on full time, four times a year, and it's very uh, energy efficient because I only uh, use it when I need it. Um, but when you're looking at other rooms, it's really important to think about the flip pattern. Right, and you can see here, you can see where the tiny houses come from, right. because look at the space on this drawing, and look look at the density of the action in the house. That's true. Family room, kitchen, and um, I'm guessing that's the dining room table there yeah. uh, in that space, and that's where the tiny home concept comes from. You get rid of all the excess space that you use once or twice a year, 
and you concentrate it there. So if you take a look here, that's another reason why not only do we like spot heating, we also like zone heating. And zone heating means we're going to set up the dining room in its own radiant heating zone. Absolutely. We're going to use the living room in its own zone because if you look there, we can keep those zones turned off 362 days a year and not have the cost associated with that, which means I can lower the temperature in the rest of the house and turn on the radiant heating in the family room when we're in there or Absolutely. in the kitchen when we're in there, also at the kitchen table. So um, it's really, really a great idea. And most people only think, I want to make sure my bathroom is warm. Right. Well, look at this drawing. You can see how many other spots in your house are congregation areas where, hey, you know what? Our kitchen is a little bit cold right here. Or our dining room, t our, our, our kitchen table, if you see there, it looks like there's a bunch of windows on that drawing. Mm -hmm. That is probably a little bit cooler in that area than it is in the rest of the kitchen. So there's another great way to zone and spot heat. Love that. Great. Let's mm -hmm. move on to the next slide. Great explanation, by the way. So um, benefits of spot uh, heating. We kind of went over some of this, but you certainly can. You're using less heating element. You're, so your watts are less. Your operating costs are less. Um, easy to install. That's why we named it that way. You really do just kind of plop it down. And uh, you can tape it if you want on the corners, um, staple a little on the corners, never hit a heating element. And then you can really just start to immediately trial right over it. And the cool thing is, if you notice, both of, both of these items shown in this picture are places where water is. That's and right. the good thing about our product is it's, it's uh, listed and tested and certified for wet locations which means you don't really have to worry about putting it in a bathroom or putting it in a, a shower. It can actually go in the shower and it can go right next to a tub because it is tested and listed for that in the U.S. and in Canada. Yeah, perfect. So benefits of spot heating. Um, most popular room we've talked about is the bathroom. Um, kitchens by far the second. And then, you know, you see spot heating a lot in home offices. You see it a lot in basements. Um, but number one uh, is, is bathrooms. Now, tell me about uh, what you're seeing right here. When, when we first went through this webinar together, Scott had a little bit of a reaction to this slide. I love this slide and I hate this slide <laughs> because this slide does show you how it can go right in front of a, of a double vanity. So you have two, two sinks there and okay. also in front of the tub. But the thing is, we're showing it in front of the vanity, really that red area representing the heating cable or the heating mat, I should say, should go under the toe kick. We all, as we mentioned at the, at the beginning of the, the webinar, that the heat travels about an inch and a half from where the cable stops. Right. So the idea there is to get the cable within an inch and a half of the toe kick wall. So that way the heat will travel up to the toe kick. And mm -hmm. when you're in front of the mirror, that keeps you from getting the warm heels, cold toes. Yeah. So this is a great idea. Just move it over to the right a little bit. And the hanging vanities are very popular th these mm -hmm. days as well. So you you really uh, you want to think about, I, I actually did this in my own home because I, I installed the products in my bathroom. I got into my tub, stepped out, and I looked at exactly where my foot was going to land. Mm -hmm. um, I did the same thing with my shower. Got into the shower, stepped out, and really looked at uh, where where my foot is, even at the entrance. You know, as I'm I'm walking into the bathroom, what's my first step into that room? So I really recommend that you walk through this with yourself, with your clients, and and really just look at the physical connection between where the your feet is going to hit that floor because we want that to be warm mm -hmm. now if you look at this particular uh, picture we had a question from richard and richard asked well if i'm going to put heat in this specific area do i need filler in the rest of the room to make up for this and as we mentioned at the very beginning of the the webinar that this is only about an eighth of an inch high so really it just gets embedded in the thin set you'd be using anyway to set your tile yeah. so it's maybe an eighth inch or less buildup that you'd have to deal with. So you don't really have to worry about putting a filler in the rest of the room. So, yeah. but that's a great question, Richard. Thank you for asking. And it makes it especially useful for uh, retrofits, remodeling. So, um, so the other thing we wanted to touch on very quickly is, you know, kitchens, at, you know, as the second place where you start to see spot heating. And in general, where we, we're seeing our customers install the, the spot heating is right there where, where they're, they're doing uh, their island, where they're doing a lot of the prep work. 
Um, we see a lot of people looking at that as the prime area to install the spot heating. And then the other one, uh, for those of us who still wash dishes by hand, <laughs> you would see right in front of that kitchen sink. Right, right. Uh, so I just wanted to mention that. So let's go uh, through uh, a few bathrooms mm -hmm. and uh, kind of talk through um, how, you know, the floor plans get done, why it's important to have the floor plans, um, and, um, and kind of let's, let's discuss maybe some double uh, duties that we can do with some of these rectangular mats. Well, one thing, if you look at this picture, I love picking these pictures apart because it really if you think about it, are you the type of person that takes a shower and then steps out onto a mat? Okay. Or are you a person that doesn't step out onto a mat? Because if you're if you're used to stepping out onto a mat, that might not be a good place for spot heating because the last thing you want to do is put heat in that spot and then cover it completely up with a rug with a rug that's going to trap that heat and not let it out. Smart. So that's what you're going to think about is like, do I need something in front of the shower or is that where there's always going to be a bath mat? So that's one thing to think about because we don't want that heat trapped under there. We, if you're going to pay for it and install it and use it, the last thing you want to do is not feel it. Right. So that's why it's important to think about how it's actually going to be used. So, okay. but you, you think about this area, these areas are, you know, very, sometimes it'd be very cold. Okay. So that's what you want to think about. And in bathrooms, you want to make sure that where you're spending the most time is where your feet are the most warm. This bathroom may have a large linen closet behind the picture behind where the person that took it behind the photographer's back um, if you're only going to stand there once every month to get new linens out or once every three months for new linens if you're me <laughs> then you you probably don't want to heat that area because right. if you're never standing there why why heat that space so that's what's so great about spot heating in a bathroom all right let's look at our next slide uh, and then uh, what we wanted to do is we kind of wanted to say okay let's take and compare a bathroom with full coverage, um, look at the, um, the cost of it, look at what areas are warmed, what are not warmed, and uh, look at costs from two perspectives. Uh, operating costs, how much does it cost to run it, and also how much does the product cost. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is a, a bathroom, it's a nice size bathroom, it's quite large, 99 square feet. Um, and as you can see, with a roll, we can get pretty full coverage there. Um, and from there, uh, we can, once we know the, the square footage of, that's being installed, we can, we, can oper we can calculate the operating costs and we can uh, certainly uh, look at the, the cost of the product. Mm -hmm. Why don't you talk about operating costs and then we'll look at Well, I want to address, costs. Dick asked us a question mm -hmm. ahead of time and Dick asked um, if we were going to be covering, cover, uh, talking about power requirements. And um, also, if we have thermostats or controls that can make it be warm by the time you set it for. So let's say if you chose, I, um, I want my system to be on from 6 in the morning till 10 in the morning. The thermostat can be set up so it's actually warm at 6 in the morning, not starting to warm at 6. So that way is what we call, um, it's a preset to get it uh, early start so it can be warm by the time you put it in. Perfect. So um, the thermostat learns how long it takes to get from point A to point B. And in it, terms of temperature? Yep. And if it increase. knows it, ha if it has to get to 84 every single day, right. it knows how long it takes to get there from different temperatures. Okay. So it's got it all figured out. So if it wants to be on by 6, it may have to start at 10 minutes early. It may have to start at 20 minutes early to get you warm by 6. But instead of you trying to figure that out, yeah. the thermostat does it for you. And John, this is a good example of a, you know, a roll coverage where you would just have one return power lead. So if you're doing something on this scale, you really do want to look at the roll product. Um, if that's not affordable, uh, the next step would be to go to um, spot heating. Or you don't have the um, number of uh, amps available for, for that particular product. Right. So as you can see, this is a great drawing that shows the entire space of that bathroom, though. Right. And, and the thing is, that just as you touched on, the, this is full coverage, a really long roll with one connection, right. which, which does make it easy. When you're showing these cuts and turns this, with this particular roll, you have to realize that you're just cutting and turning the mesh. Right. You never, ever cut the heating wire. You don't shorten it or alter it in any way. But you can cut and turn these mats to fit into this space. And this, this uh, in terms of operating costs, we've got a little bit over 12 amps here. Mm -hmm. um, so this would be on a 15 amp uh, circuit quite nicely. Um, and as you can see, it's not, uh, the operating costs are, are not uh, outrageous. It's 62 cents a day. 
um, $18 a month roughly and $226 uh, for the full year. Of course, you're not using it in the summer, um, but that's assuming uh, 12 cents per kilowatt and an eight hour uh, per day usage. And in a bathroom, you could probably even do less than eight hours, a yeah. few hours in the morning, a few hours in the evening, depending on your schedule. So it could even be more cost effective. Let's look at the price of the full coverage. So roughly $1,000 for 99 square feet. Um, and um, so you can kind of get a feel for what that project looks like. Now let's take that same room okay. and let's look at what it would be with an easy map. And here you want to target maybe more than one area because it is a larger sized bathroom. So if you were on a budget or if you just wanted to be strategic and get the operating costs low or use less amps, this is a way to do it. You want to talk us through it, Scott? Well, yeah, you see uh, you've got the three separate little mats there and the, some of them are not little, but three separate mats. And um, if you ever look at any of our drawings, you see there, number one is the purple one. It's got a one in a circle mm -hmm. and it has a triangle and it has a square. The triangle is where the cable goes into it. So from that triangle, we would just need to get the lead, the non-heating cold lead from the triangle over to the T, which is the thermostat there in, uh, in the, on the wall between the vanity and the toilet. Then you'd also need to get the wires from mat number three over to that thermostat. And then you need to get the cold lead from mat number two, which is over by the uh, bathtub. And you would need to get it over to the thermostat, which is all very easy because the cold leads are all 15 feet long. Yes. So you should have no issue getting those wires uh, directly over to that thermostat and, and get them up in there. The only thing that's different about this is you can see there's a lot less coverage in the room. Yes. And there's more connections. So just keep that in mind when you're getting ready to do your, your installation. Three is a sweet spot. You really don't want any more than three because remember, you've got a thermostat that you've got to get those three wires to the back of. Right. So. And I think what's key here is set expectation with yourself, with your customers. Know that any place you don't have that mat, that center right, that's going to be a cold area in the mm -hmm. winter. And so you just you have to be prepared for that. That might be the perfect place to put that little uh, rug you were talking about right. earlier. Right, right, exactly. Now, the one thing I love about this is it does reduce the energy costs. We went from 12 amps. We basically cut that in half to about mm -hmm. 6 amps there. Um, as you can see, operating costs follows the same. It's uh, a little bit uh, more than half with at $109 per, uh, $109 per year. Um, John's got a question. Are the wires uh, to be in conduit? That depends on your local code. Um, there are two wires. There's the return uh, power at 120 or 240 volt for in, in most cases. And then there is a uh, sensor wire. And um, we like to talk about Chicago. For well, a reason. because it, yeah, burned down. Burned down. <laughs> so here, you know, the wires are in conduit. They're actually uh, the the power is in one, and the low voltage is in a separate conduit. So that that I hope that helps your. Uh, well, the, the thing to keep in mind is local code is always what you want to go by. Exactly. Some local codes, uh, even in the surrounding Chicago area, some local codes don't require conduit at all. Right. The one thing you want to do is you want to make sure that the high power wires are never in, if you use conduit, that they're never in the same conduit yeah. as the high voltage wires. First of all, it's against code to do that. Right. And second of all, it can throw your readings of your thermostat off. So you can put the return power leads, you can put those, uh, str you know, string them across the floor, if you will, and that can be covered with um, thin set or self-leveling. That's perfectly legit, but you never want that hot wire going up the conduit. Right, and John also uh, asked a question, do, do the leads have to be in conduit in the setting bed? Yeah. And the answer to that is no, no. they don't need to be. No. Um, so hopefully that answered your question. But um, anything else on this? No, I just want to point out, you know, the, the fact that, you know, the amps are now down to six instead of 12. If, you, if you've got a lot of, if, if you don't have a lot of electrical av available, this is a great way to still get some warm floors uh, without um, not being able to uh, trip that breaker. Um, can the power wires uh, transition to walls? Um, if you, uh, you want to answer that. Yeah, the, I mean, cold, the cold lead is built and designed and tested by UL to be able to be put in a wall if the if the local code, code doesn't is. require conduit. Exactly. So yes, they um, can go. If your if your code does not require conduit in the wall, they can go through the floor, in to the wall and up, up. to your thermostat. 
um, according to UL listing. And from, from the setting bed, John. Yes. I hope that answers your question. All right, so let's also take a, a look at costs. If cost is uh, of a concern, and it usually is, um, you you took an you took a, from one thousand and you reduced your cost to six hundred, so uh, you saved about thirty three percent on that. So and that can make a significant difference. So that's the key. Um, um, we really want to kind of show you how you can strategically look at a room, look at the areas in it, decide where you really need the heat. Mm -hmm. We want it everywhere, but where do you really need it? And then look at uh, ways to to make that happen on a reduced budget and maybe not having the power that you need for a larger area. And it's gonna cost you less up front for installation because uh, if you have somebody to come in and do the installation for you, they can do this in much less time than doing the entire room. Right. So you're looking at less overhead right at the very beginning too. Excellent point. All right, uh, a great time to mention that, you know, you also can spot heat inside a shower. Uh, we have uh, specifically customized um, mats that you designed, Scott, uh, based on typical shower floors and, and bench size. Talk a little bit about how you designed this product line. Well, there are certain sizes that are very common in North America, and we decided, hey, you know what? It would be great if we had a size that would just fit inside there, If as long as you have a center drain, because the center drain hole is already planned around and it's right. already cut out. So you can just lay it down there and fit it in. Now we know that you may have a specially sized shower that may have a trench drain over on the side or something like that. And you can use our other product in there are smaller mats or whatever, a combination of cut and turn or anything to fit in that space. Because remember all of our uh, temp zone product is listed for wet locations and can go in the shower. The one thing that you wanna think about when you're doing the shower and the shower bench, if you ever sit down on your bench in your shower, you might wanna heat it because it can get really, really cold. But <laughs> The thing about shower floors and the difference between them and the floors out in your bathroom is usually the bathroom floors are in a much thinner bed. So you have a very thin bed that you have to heat. Sometimes in a shower, you can get along the edges, you know, two or three inches thick. We always want the wire to be within an inch to an inch and a half of the top of any surface to make sure it's warm. But if you have a shower that's this thick and you're still within an inch, inch and a half, you still have a bunch below that that's going to try to heat also. So it might be good if you're doing um, this installation in your shower is to put it actually on its own thermostat okay. because you can turn it up a little bit higher and you can then make sure that that entire mass gets heated up because it usually it will lag behind the rest of the floor because it's much thicker installation. Yeah, uh, and it, it's optional. I mean, I have a, I have a, the shower floor and the bench uh, installed in my own home and I have it on the same control. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I do think it's a great point that uh, just be aware, again, set the expectation that that may, um, it may take a little bit more time to warm up. Um, but the thing is, you know, so we talk to thousands of people every yeah. year, thousands and thousands and thousands. And we try to show, uh, to answer questions to let you know what other people have told us. Mm -hmm. I wish I would have done this or, you know. I've done it this way and it worked out great, that sort of stuff. We like to pass that on to other people because obviously we like to learn from previous installations and share that information with you when you may not have actually thought about it because this may be your first bathroom yeah. you've ever installed. And we're gonna be talking about uh, thermostats and the cost of thermostats a little bit later um, in the presentation. Uh, so uh, we're gonna to get to that question. Um, and yes, we w just wanted to give you a general idea of the sizes that are available. You don't have to memorize this. Send in your floor plan, we'll design it for you. And if th this does not work, as uh, Scott said, any of our heating element roll products could fit the bill uh, because they are uh, wet listed approved. Um, so just to give you a general idea to, and again, you took most the most popular sizes and you design that, design the drain hole. Um, and you can, uh, I use this product in, in my own shower, and we we um, had to just finagle it just a little bit to get the, that right um, spacing around the drain hole, but it wasn't uh, that difficult to do. We just kind of took a little area, let the heating element out, and just, you know. Preformed it. Preformed it, yeah. So it worked out really well. All right. And that gives you just a general feel for a layout that we would send back to you showing the, the fit. These um, floor plans, 
we love that that uh, you use that or you use it with your customers because it really, again, it sets the expectation. Here's exactly where that heat's going to be. Uh, you want more, you want less. We can design it any way you want, but it's a great tool for a, a conversation. Right, right. And you can see both of these um, solutions are just drop in. Yeah. So, I mean, it's you literally get the shower pan done, you push this down on it, you thin set over it and put the tile in. There's, there's no stringing cables back and forth. There's none of that. Um, the, when we installed the, the heat in your, in your shower, we, we did the bench too. And, you know, you can wire them together. We, we got them both set up, uh, set the leads down from the bench. You, you, you run it down the front of the bench into in thin set that the, so you run it down the front of the bench. It's, it's in the thin set that is setting the tile on the front of the bench. It's really, really not very difficult at all. Get both of those hooked up to the same thermostat, it works like a charm. It's easy. <laughs> All right. And then, you know, we wanted to, at this point, look at floor plans, but based on the fixtures in the room. And so one of the, uh, one area people like, they, they're nice and warm in that shower. They want to step out and they want to stay warm. So if you're not going to put uh, a little rug there, um, this is a great uh, choice for you to discuss with yourself. Uh, well. You can, you, you don't have to. Do I talk to myself yeah. and yeah. I answer myself. So you, you work with me too long. We don't have to psychoanalyze <laughs> it. <laughs> but, you know, uh, think about that outside of the shower area. Uh, look, this is a, a, a three by a three. Uh, the trend um, these days is for uh, larger showers. But as you can see, we go from three, three by two sizes all the way out to um, three by ten. So there, there is a size that would fit every shower, hopefully. All right, let's move on and look at outside bathtub. Um, this was, you know, where I was literally telling you I climbed into my bathtub and I stepped out to kind of make sure that I, I, I got the right fit and I didn't waste any of the heat under that tub area. And the thing is, if you have a clawfoot tub, the last thing you want to do is get it too far underneath there because there are uh, people that have told us that the guys came to drill a hole for the pipes oh. or for the drain and they got hit, they hit the wire with that. So the idea there is not to get way under the tub. You don't want to heat under the tub. You want to heat where your foot sits to get into the tub and where your foot hits on your way out of the tub. Excellent. And there's really no other need to go any, any further underneath there. If that were a permanently installed tub with a flat side, you wouldn't go under it at all. You just go right up close to it. And we have some uh, photos coming up uh, that are more install shots so we can talk uh, about sensors, leads, and, and uh, things like that. Um, so here, very simple, straightforward, just uh, showing the, you know, the heating element in front of the, the toilet. Um, I, I did say that, you know, we sometimes try to look at things to see if they can play double duty. So, uh, you know, as you're placing these rectangular mats, you know, see if uh, as you're stepping out of the shower, you know, um, is, is there a way for you to position it so it's meeting both um, demands? Right. So. so it's good to have, you know, what you can do is you can send us a sketch of your floor and we'll be glad to go over it with you about what areas that you might want to make sure that you have coverage. Whenever I'm out doing an installation or out doing training for installation, we always say, we always say, I always have the guys or the gals who are installing it walk around the room and pretend you're the customer mm. because pretend you're going to where the linen closet is, pretend you're going to where the toilet is and make sure that wherever you're walking, there's heat there or heat where you're going to be spending time. The spots where you never, ever walk or rarely ever walk mm -hmm. is an area that you can just leave unheated. Yeah. We call this one the thinker. Mm -hmm. It's sitting Absolutely. there and you're just saying, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. 96 tiers. <laughs> Single vanity. Um, this is perfect for the powder room, um, for the kids' room. Um, you know, just getting a little bit of extra comfort into those area. I mean, it means a lot to your guests. It means a lot to the kids. It means a lot to the cat. So, Absolutely. All right. And then from there, uh, this is the big, this is the number one choice, that double vanity. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, like in my home, I had the double vanity. And then um, directly across, I have my, uh, my tub. So um, I did one that serve both purposes. So. And you can see with this drawing also that there is a spot there for, right in front of the toilet and next to the shower mm -hmm. that would be doing double duty there. So that's uh, another thing that we can help you with when you're planning your space. 
All right, so now into a little bit more of the technical stuff. I think John's going to be happy. Mm -hmm. um, so, so walk us through the cross-section. Uh, do you want to start top uh, top to bottom or bottom up? We're going to ask you two questions. When when they're when they're looking to heat their floor, we're going to ask you, what is the subfloor? Okay. And what is your walking surface? And then we can tell you what type of product and how it's going to be installed to fit in between there. Okay. So we're kind of like the peanut butter and jelly inside of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Okay. We need to know that there's bread on the top and bread on the bottom. It's how you fill the space in between that we're really good experts at. And we took the most common um, application that we see, you know, what we normally see in bathrooms. So wood subfloor, and you usually have tile or some type of stone um, as your final flooring surface. So talk about what's in between there. Well, you've got the wood subfloor. Um, you also then, you, there's one of two things. Your local code may say that, hey, you need to put a scratch coat of thinset down first over the plywood. Most don't, but sometimes they do. So when we look at the thin set here, we've already taught, we know what a subfloor is and we know what our easy mats are. We've talked about those. We need to talk about the thin set. We haven't really talked about that yet. And the thin set we recommend is latex modified thin set. So in this case, you would take any quality latex modified thin set. And after you put the easy mat down on the subfloor and attach it really well using staples through the mesh or hot glue to hold it down, never ever staple the wire. But once you get it attached to the subfloor, then you can either cover it with self-leveling. If you don't attach it to the real, to the subfloor really well and use self-leveling, your, your, your heating mat is going to go up to the top of the self-leveling, and you don't want that. You don't want that. So we're just showing you thin set because that's what happens in most of the bathrooms, and the thin set you want to use is latex-modified thin set. That's going to be about three-eighths of an inch total of thin set between the tile and the wood subfloor. And that's going to encase our product inside. Nice. And I see an end cap there. Why don't you touch on that uh, very quickly? Yeah, there's a splice at the end because our wire is a twin conductor wire. So at the very end, it needs to be tied together to continue the loop. And then the cold lead at the very beginning is a 15-foot cold lead. And it um, it's, a, it's about a quarter of an inch by a little bit less. It's kind of like a, an oblong type thing. It's not exactly round, which helps you lay it down flatter. And it right. helps fit under the tile as you set it. Um, if you're interested in any of those pictures of what they look like, you can go into our installation manual and it shows you how to deal with the splice at the beginning and the end cap at the end because they're a little bit thicker. Right. So you want to plan for those. Uh, when you're laying the tile, you don't want the tile to get stuck teeter-tottering over either one of those splices or end caps. So you just have to make sure that it's sitting down nice and flat. Excellent. All right. So um, here's an actual install that this was done at my house. At, I think that's my house. Uh, and uh, there are a few things that we like to talk about, at, you know, to be aware of at the beginning of every install. So that, why don't you go over that? Well, first of all, look at where it is. It's not right up against the tub. Mm -hmm. It's a couple inches away from the tub yeah. because that's where your feet are going to hit. So when you're putting this in, you and usually if you're doing a remodel, there's something that's been there before. It's never going to be a pristine unless it's a brand new building. So what, you, and, and even sometimes with brand new buildings, I've seen where the nails don't get driven all the way into the subfloor. You want to make sure that there's no nails sticking up that can touch uh, the wire. Um, you need to make sure that's nice and clean, get rid of any oil, that sort of stuff. And when you are ready to make sure, what, what I always suggest is that you put it down on the floor and make sure that it's where you want it to be. So you do a dry fit first. Yeah, yeah. Before you start attaching it to the subfloor, put it where you think you might want to be, put a pair of slippers on, and then step from the floor to the tub and from the tub to the floor. And, and in this case, the entrance as well. Yeah. So once again, this is a double duty area yeah. where both of these have been uh, laid out. So now if you're happy with where it is, then you can go ahead and attach it to the subfloor. So glue it down, staple it down carefully. Um, and, and then finally, these are easy mats. They really are not meant to be cut. Mm -hmm. uh, the whole key is that it's that simple. You lay it down, plop it, and be done. Right. Okay. Um, there's that sensor we were talking about. Um, not very large, as you can see. Um, do, you, do you know the, the, the size of that sensor head? Oh, it's less than a quarter of an inch. It's yeah. really, really small. All right. So the, the, this floor sensor comes with the thermostat. Um, you can run your heat. You can run your floor on floor temperature, 
or on ambient temperature. Most prefer floor temperature uh, so that they really can control it. Um, and if you want that floor temperature uh, to be controlled, you need a floor sensor. So make sure you get that sensor out of the box. We even have warning labels on the rolls and don't forget the sensor. Um, and then that sensor gets installed uh, close to the thermostat location on the wall um, and within approximately six inches into uh, the Easy Mat or any of the, our products, but never touching the actual cable. You really want right. to center it between uh, a cable loop so that you get accurate readings. Right, and you never want to run the wire over one of the heating wires. Yeah. So you want to, you, if your loop is like this, you want to run, to run the wire into the open part of the loop. And you don't need to get it out into the middle of the floor. You just need to get it about six to eight inches into that open loop and put it in there and make sure it's right in the middle. All right. So it's very, very easy to install. It's about it's about nine foot long is the lead. So it gives you some, um, you, you figure, usually a thermostat's four feet off the ground and you want a foot of the wire sticking out. So you're five foot in the wall. You've got about four foot to get it out to wherever you need it to go. Yeah, easy. And now this is a low voltage uh, sensor. We talked about that a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. That in some areas you could just run up the wall. In other areas, it might require its own conduit. You never put the floor sensor and the return power leads in the same conduit. Correct. All right. And then uh, you've done your dry fit. Mm -hmm. You've got uh, you've got you've kind of adhered it to the, the subfloor, and uh, you're ready to go. So what this done here is the two-step method, yep. and that is you get the mat laid out. And then you cover it with a thin layer of thin set mm -hmm. to hold it in place. And then once the thin set uh, gets firm enough to walk on, then you can start coming back and back buttering your tile, putting thin set down on the pre-existing thin set and start laying your tiles like that, putting them down. And this gives you a nice flat surface that you can start working over. The, the hard part about trying to do a tile installation over an easy mat without this first layer of thin set is if you've done less than a dozen tile jobs, it's always hard to, to not get lippage. And lippage is the difference in height between two tiles next to each other. Right. So beginners, we always suggest you do the two-step method because for beginners, it's very hard to get that floor completely flat because you're going over a heating mat. So the best thing is just cover it up, come back later when it's firm, and start tiling over the top. Good tip. And then uh, finally, you know, we never turn on the heating element until uh, your particular uh, adhesive product is fully cured. You know, Julie, what we forgot to talk about that I talk about in every single webinar? Testing. We forgot to test the easy mat because the last thing you want to do is not test it, put it in and find out that something happened to it while it was installed. Right. So you are going to need to test the sensor to make sure it's good. Yep. And you also want to test the easy mat before you install it. Now, after we've installed it, we want to go ahead and get our ohms reading so we can write it down in our owner's manual and we can send it in on the warranty card when we're all done. So one thing you want to make sure of, and we get this question, the reason why I brought that up is because people say, I want to turn it on, see if it works. Hmm. Well, the only way that you want to test it to see if it works is with an ohm meter exactly. to test the ohms because you don't want to install this and turn the, turn the system on too soon before the thin set is cured. And you know what people always ask me? What? How long does it take the thin set to cure? I know the answer. Well, she knows that the answer is on the bag <laughs> because the bag of thin set will say, please allow 28 days to cure or 21 days to cure or whatever that is. Whatever that bag tells you, that's how long you want to wait to turn the system on. And some of these fast acting adhesives, it could be just hours. Sure. Yeah. All right. So uh, we bears, worth, it's worth repeating, make sure the thin set's completely dry before installing the tile. Um, any other tips? Um, well, if you're doing this in the one step or two step, what you really wanna do is you want to clean your grout lines as you install the tile. Mm. What we talk to people with, people with problems with their floor are people that have installed the tile then they come back in a week or two and they take a really sharp blade to clean out the grout lines. It does happen a lot. And you know what happens with a really, really sharp knife mm -hmm. and an electric cable? It's not really, it's like, um, like a screen door on a submarine. They're great when they're not together, but when you put them together, it's not so good. So what you wanna do here is you want to take a toothbrush. What's really great is a regular old toothbrush. And as you're laying the tile, use that toothbrush to clean the grout lines out. 
and great... then you've got a nice clean grout line. You don't have to come back later with that blade and start cleaning them out. So that is a lesson that we're going to pass on to you right now, no charge, that's going to save you some, some heartache. And if for some uh, stuff happens, and if something uh, like this does happen, um, we're here 24-7. Um, Scott's here 24-7 taking those tech calls. And we'll work you through how to repair it. So Yeah, if something happens to that wire, we can find out exactly where it was damaged and we can repair it. All is not lost. Right. All right. Now, um, uh, John, back to your question. Um, we have a variety of um, thermostats that we sell. Any, anything as, as simple as you just set it and leave it, to um, Wi-Fi uh, thermostats, touch uh, thermostats. Most popular is is our touch, um, and they range from I guess about 150 all the way out to about two 299. 299. So there are definitely a variety of options that an account manager can walk you through. It really depends on um, I think who's using it. Um, I personally don't change my settings that frequently. So I'm very happy with something where I can just set it and leave it. Occasionally I manually adjust it. But then if you're into, uh, you know, if you really want the Wi-Fi connectivity, maybe you uh, want to be able to uh, turn it on at the office uh, so that it's nice and warm when you get home, you, you want to think about how you're going to be using the system and, and, and what your character traits are, if mm -hmm. you will. Yeah, if you know that you've been out on the bobsled trail, uh, all morning and you know what it's like I'm going to go home and take a warm shower on the way home you can change the temperature of your floor have it be nice and warm by the time you get home and then you take your shower and you step out onto a nice warm floor that's what's so great about the Wi-Fi and we do offer a Wi-Fi version but the touch screens are very elegant people absolutely love them yeah and they really really look cool on the side of your wall now uh, I just had a question yesterday from somebody that said how many mats can I hook up to this thermostat well, you can hook up as many as you want in theory, as long as they all total less than 15 amps. Good point. Each control will handle less than will handle 15 amps or less. So if you're going to be doing a large space, that's where you want to go to 240 volt because it allows you to cover twice the amount of space as 120 does with the same amount of amperage. And there is no benefit to 240 over 120. It just lets you double the space that you heat. That's the only benefit of it. Excellent. So if you're doing a 60 square foot space, there's no reason for 240 volts. Save the space in your breaker box for something else more festive. Right. And every quote that we do, every floor plan that we design, we give you uh, the electrical requirements for that particular application or room. So when it comes to wiring, the thermostats are very simple. It's kind of like wiring a switch um, if you've ever done that. But many states require that this step is done by an electrician. And if you've never hooked up anything, like ever replaced one of your switches, we just suggest, you know, you everything we've shown you, you can probably do yourself, except for this part. This right. part, you may want to have a professional come in and do. Especially if you're playing with 240 volt. Yes. All right. So um, we also wanted to, we talked about it a little bit earlier. I mean, you can do spot heating in other rooms. Um, Tempzone is very specific. It's embedded. But we also have spot heating for um, uh, floating floors like carpet, uh, laminates. Um, this stuff is great for spot heating in a family room that has carpeting. Or a bedroom. Yeah, because you can put it right in front of the couch mm -hmm. and or the area right in the center of the room where the kids are going to sit and play while they watch TV. Mm -hmm. um, that's what, what a lot of people do, especially in basements in the Midwest, is they want that family room to be nice and warm in front where they can put their feet down in front of their couch yeah. and have it a nice spot there on the floor for the kids to play while they watch TV. So we're not going to go through it. It's it's roughly the same, it's the con same idea. concept. Yeah. It's just if you have a carpet or floating, this is the product instead of Tempson. So we just wanted to put that out there for you. Um, so this is it, guys. Um, any last questions? Because the man is here. So uh, if there's something uh, that we can um, share with you now, great. If not, um, we you know we're here. We definitely uh, you can reach us by email, um, Facebook. Um, let's talk about uh, what's going on as we're waiting for our questions. Let's uh, fast forward to the next slide. And let's talk about what's happening right now with um, our, we have a, uh, another webinar coming up. Um, we are here the second Thursday of every month. I like to be at most of these. 
Um, we're going to be just talking about the fundamentals of electric floor heating. So we're just going to get back to basics. Like how many watts per square foot, how long in the cold leads, what does a wire look like? Right. All that sort of stuff that's kind of like uh, electric floor heating 101 yep. that may have kind of gone, you know, or you may have had it years ago and you kind of forgot about it. Yep. Uh, one thing we would talk about uh, before we talk about it, uh, that is if you do have any questions, remember our website has got a lot of videos on it. And if you do, um, if you go on YouTube and, and do search, we went on this morning to YouTube and did a thermostat, uh, checking a thermostat troubleshooting. We were like four out of the top 20 uh, hits hmm. on YouTube. So we've got quite a presence on YouTube and all of our uh, videos are on our website at warmlyyours.com. So you might want to check that out because it's really a, a, a great amount of knowledge. And also all of our installation manuals are right there online too, under documents. So if you want to install temp zone, you look under temp zone documents and you'll see the installation. We have cross sections that show the different layers like we talked about earlier. All right, you're getting a little too enthusiastic oh, I here. I love guys. it. It's great. <laughs> All right. So join us for our next web webinar where we're going to get back to, to basics March 8th, uh, second Thursday. Um, we always like to talk about what's happening in terms of promotions. Uh, so we do have 20 percent off the easy mats going on. Uh, this month, and we have a towel warmer uh, sale that's going on as well. So um, just want to make you guys aware of that. Um, so check it out on our website. There's more information there. And then other than that, um, after this, we're going to send you a survey. We really want to hear uh, your feedback. What did you like? What didn't you like? Um, we are one. The core of Warmly Yours is that we're always trying to get better, stronger, tougher every day. And we do that by hearing from you. So give us your honest feedback. And then other than that, you know where to reach us. Call us on the 800 number. Um, I'm the owner, so my email is right there, jbillen at warmlyyours.com. Email me. I want to hear from you. Um, you notice Scott's email isn't up there. Because I talk to everybody all weekend. So <laughs> I, I, I'm well in touch with everyone. All right. Check out our website. Check us out on Facebook. And until... Uh, March, uh, second Thursday of the month. We uh, will we'll, we'll be back and we'll see you then and stay warm. And be radiant. Yay. Thanks, guys.